Here, I continue my critique of John McCain's call to service and its disastrous implications. Because McCain's call to service is not just a call for government to subsidize volunteer, or so-called volunteer service, with taxpayer money. Bad enough, as that may be in itself. Rather, McCain would have compulsory service if he could get it. I'm grateful to Mr. William Dwyer for furnishing the following quotations on the Rebirth of Reason forum. Quote, Asked about compensation for service, McCain said, I'd be glad to reward volunteers as much as possible, but you want to be careful that the reason is not the reward of financial or other reasons, McCain's phrasing, not mine, but the reward is the satisfaction of serving a cause greater than yourself, finding new ways to serve. That's what this next few years should be all about. McCain will only go so far in providing actual incentives for people to become interested in what he calls service activities. The rest, according to him, has to be done without any self-interest. That is, McCain wants us to do things we have no reason of our own to do. Any personal reasons whatsoever, be they material or intellectual or emotional, are not worthy, or at least not as worthy, as pure devotion to some, quote, higher cause, for the sake of that cause in itself, and not any benefits it confers on oneself. The logical implication of this reasoning is that individuals should be coerced to serve, quote, higher causes, because causes that people do not choose to pursue voluntarily are causes for which they do not have a personal interest, and so are the best, according to this ideology, causes for people to serve. After all, if you are already choosing to do something, it is at least possible that you are choosing to do it entirely because you have some kind of self-interest in it, be it material, intellectual, or emotional. Best way for the government to know that a cause is not in your self-interest is that you're not doing it already. And if you are forced to do it, then the government can confidently get you to serve a cause that is not in your self-interest. And indeed, McCain does believe that there are cases in which compulsory service and service of the most dangerous kind is justified. While McCain says that he would be opposed to military conscription in, quote, ordinary circumstances, he did say the following. I don't know what would make a draft happen unless we were in an all-out World War III. So McCain does not dispute the moral legitimacy of military conscription and would certainly disagree with my argument that conscription is murder by lottery, which is a very simple and intuitive argument once you've heard it. Take a bunch of young men, line them up on a field, draw some small proportion of their names out of a hat, and shoot the young men whose names you draw. You did not know when you gathered those young men and lined them up on the field, which of them would die. But is it still not murder? And in war, certainly no person draws the names out of a hat, but rather the vicissitudes of the battlefield, where very often individuals die for no personal fault or shortcoming of their own, irrespective of how courageous or how cowardly or how skilled or how intelligent they are. They die. And had they not been forced into the situation of having to fight in the first place, they would not have died. So conscription, putting people in situations where their lives are at least somewhat likely to be taken away from them, is murder of those who do die and enslavement of those who do not die. Mr. McCain does not hold this view of conscription. And 
with the kind of extensive military presence overseas and provocative foreign policy that McCain proposes, American involvement in a future World War III is much more likely than it would be otherwise. Keep in mind that McCain, who has joked about bombing Iran, is not considering World War III to be off-limits. To say that he only thinks a draft would be justified in the event of World War III is not to say that he considers World War III to be some remote, far-off impossibility. Rather, he thinks that World War III is at least probable. On July 16, 2006, Newt Gingrich said that, quote, we are in the early stages of what I would describe as the Third World War with Iran, and frankly, we don't have the right attitude. When asked to comment on Gingrich's words, McCain responded that he concurred with Gingrich, quote, to some extent. He continued, I think it's important to recognize that we have terrorist organizations who are dangerous by themselves and are now being supported by radical Islamic governments. McCain further said in September 2007 that he could consider a military draft that could be designed so that wealthy people would be subject to it on an equal basis with poorer people. McCain is not appalled by the thought of a draft, but he does dislike an unegalitarian draft. If there could be an egalitarian draft, one that kills all people in equal proportions, McCain would be enthusiastically in support of it. There are several videos that are linked in the reference section accompanying this presentation where McCain says just this. McCain's call that, quote, each and every one of us has a duty to serve a cause greater than our own self-interest is not new nor is it at home among pro-liberty, pro-rights ideas. Rather, it has more in common with the following statements, for which I am again grateful to Mr. Dwyer. This statement is quite telling. This state of mind, which subordinates the interests of the ego to the conservation of the community, is really the first premise for every truly human culture. The basic attitude from which such activity arises, we call to distinguish it from egoism and selfishness, idealism. By this we understand only the individual's capacity to make sacrifices for the community, for his fellow men. Who made that statement? The author was Adolf Hitler in Mein Kampf. Here is another statement extolling a moral law binding together individuals and the generations into a tradition and a mission, a higher life, a life in which the individual, through the denial of himself, through the sacrifice of his own private interests, realizes that completely spiritual existence in which his value as a man lies. Author of that statement was Benito Mussolini, the dictator of fascist Italy. Is it not perplexing? that the ideals of Nazi and fascist leaders are being used as campaign slogans, and the rank-and-file Republican voters, who are supposed to be in favor of individual freedom and capitalism, are obliviously cheering for them. They should think some more, and turn back from making a truly fatal mistake.